Harry Truman founded the CIA in 1947 to gather intelligence on global threats. However, the agency's activities gradually shifted to influencing and interfering in other nations' internal affairs, ultimately damaging America's international standing and trust. A series of assassinations and political coups followed, overthrowing democratically elected governments in almost every corner of the world. Additionally, people in more than 20 countries were ultimately denied the liberty to pick their own leaders. Today we're looking at 25 times CIA interference had such a massive impact that it ultimately changed the course of history. The actions and outcomes are presented in no particular order due to their sensitive nature. I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 times CIA interference changed the course of history. Twenty-five, Greece, 1947 to 1967. In 1947, the CIA's first act of foreign interference was to provide military aid to notorious Greek fascists. These fascists had a dismal human rights record, but were backed in their war against the communists. Just a few years later, in 1965, a CIA-backed military coup ousted the anti-American Prime Minister Georgios Papandreou just days before the election, when it became clear that Papandreou would be the likely winner. The regime of the colonels was established, a military dictatorship that annihilated freedoms, civil rights, and Greek democracy for the next seven years. The country that witnessed the birth of democracy found itself in a state of anarchy concealed by oppression, censorship, and a disregard for human rights. 24. Chile, 1973. In 1973, the CIA deposed Chile's democratically elected leader, Salvador Allende, on President Nixon's orders. Allende was a temperate man who hesitated to use force against his political opponents. The CIA replaced him with the infamous General Pinochet, who proceeded to torture and murder over 40,000 people. More details about Project Fubelt, the codename for covert activities to destabilize Allende's administration by politically isolating Chile and destabilizing its economy, were later exposed in declassified documents. The documents additionally provided further proof of Pinochet's cruelty-ridden human rights abuses and detailed Operation Condor, which developed a system of state-sponsored terrorism carried out by the Chilean secret police, DINA. 23. Cambodia, 1970 In 1970, the CIA assisted in overthrowing Cambodia's beloved leader, Prince Sihanouk, as retribution for keeping Cambodia out of the Vietnam War. Lon Nol, his right-wing replacement, got rid of the known communists and instantly joined the war on America's side. Historians say that this coup set in motion a series of disastrous short- and long-term consequences, including Cambodia's civil war, the ensuing reign of the Khmer Rouge's harsh communist regime, more than a decade of Vietnamese occupation, and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of deaths. 22. El Salvador, 1980-1992 in 1980, the Archbishop of San Salvador implored U.S. President Jimmy Carter to discontinue supporting the military regime that was murdering his people. Carter refused, and shortly afterward, the Archbishop Oscar Romero was assassinated while giving mass. The CIA had previously worked with the assassins and was familiar with their techniques. The country quickly fragmented into a civil war, with thousands of men, women, and children massacred by CIA-trained death squads. By 1992, over 62,000 Salvadorans had been murdered. 21. Afghanistan, 1979 to 1989. Following the Soviet takeover of Afghanistan in 1979, the CIA started supplying weapons to anyone who was willing to fight the Soviets. Three billion dollars were spent on outfitting, training, and funding the Mujahideen soldiers. When the Soviets left, extremist Muslims like Sheikh Abdel Rahman and Osama bin Laden inherited a massive arsenal of weapons. The CIA would go on to provide support to many of bin Laden's associates, including Rahman, who moved on to co-plan the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. 20. Ecuador, 1961-1963 in 1961, military forces backed by the CIA forced the resignation of the elected president, Jose Velasco. A mere two years later, in 1963, the CIA was directly involved in the ousting of President Rosamena in a military coup after he offended the U.S. ambassador to Ecuador, denounced the U.S. government, and endorsed Castro's revolution in Cuba. Human rights violations were unavoidable once the CIA imposed a military dictatorship in Ecuador. 
The country had to endure two military dictatorships, 1963 to 66 and 1972 to 79, before democracy was finally restored with the election of Jaime Roldos Aguilera. 19. Brazil, 1964. In 1964, the CIA staged a military coup against Brazil's democratically elected leader, João Goulart. They replaced him with military fascists, such as General Branco. Goulart's replacements dispatched assassination squads to eliminate all political opponents. The CIA later admitted to training these murder squads in torture, interrogation, and assassination procedures. Declassified State Department records revealed a sophisticated and intricate psychophysical duress system meant to intimidate and terrorize suspected communist militants. Torture techniques used to dispose of rebels included special effects rooms in Brazilian military prisons where inmates were laid naked on a metal floor while running an electric current through it. 18. Vietnam, 1954-1969 The CIA spent several years trying to overthrow North Vietnam's communist government, so much so that the level of interference led to a perpetual war. A war they knew they couldn't win. In fact, history would teach us that almost 60,000 members of the U.S. Armed Forces disappeared or died during the war. In Vietnam, the losses were astronomical. Over 2 million civilians were killed on both sides. Approximately 1,100,000 Viet Cong and North Vietnamese fighters and around 250,000 South Vietnamese soldiers also died. Even though Vietnam emerged as a solid military opponent, its agriculture, business, and industries were disrupted, and its infrastructure was nearly crippled. Back here in the U.S., the country would end up divided, and its military demoralized. 17. Angola, 1975-2002 Angola is a major producer of oil in Africa. Beginning in 1975, a CIA-backed civil war killed more than 500,000 Angolans over 27 years. Despite the fact that Angola is a country of little strategic importance, Gerald Ford directed the CIA to offer covert aid to anti-communists active in the fight. The actions taken by the United States encouraged the Soviet Union to intervene, escalating and prolonging the war. According to John Stockwell, the CIA's then station chief in Angola, the Soviets were not active in the country before the CIA's intervention. 16. Cuba, 1961 In 1961, the CIA deployed 1,500 Cuban exiles to wage war on Castro's Cuba. The mission backfired spectacularly when an expected U.S. airstrike failed to take place, leading to the deaths of several of the exiles. They also attempted several assassinations on Fidel Castro, some very well known, like the exploding cigar, and collaborated with mafia leaders and political dissidents on numerous clandestine operations within Cuba, including Operation Mongoose and Operation Northwoods. In the latter, CIA operatives explored the possibility of a false flag operation that would make it possible for the U.S. to launch a large-scale military attack on Cuba. 15. Haiti, 1959-1990 Papa Doc Duvalier seized power in Haiti in 1959. He garnered America's support for his anti-communist measures despite repeated human rights violations. During his tenure, Duvalier's private police squad murdered nearly 100,000 Haitians. In 1971, baby Doc Duvalier took charge and continued to murder the inhabitants. Following Duvalier's departure in 1986, the CIA established the National Intelligence Service, which employed torture and assassination to suppress further uprisings. In 1990, a communist priest ran against 10 affluent candidates in a general election and received 68% of the vote. After only eight months in power, the CIA-backed military toppled the newly elected leader, restoring a cruel dictatorship that forced thousands of Haitians to evacuate the island on rafts. 14. Hungary, 1956. In 1956, the CIA Cold War propaganda source Radio Free Europe incited a revolt in Hungary by airing Khrushchev's secret speech, in which he criticized Stalin. Nikita S. Khrushchev commanded the Red Army to crush the Hungarian uprising with force between November 4th and November 8th, 1956. Soviet troops mounted an enormous offensive and overthrew the independent national government. Hungary was subjected to harsh repression almost immediately, and hundreds of thousands of Hungarians escaped to the West. The revolt that followed claimed the lives of 30,000 Hungarians and 7,000 Soviets. 13. Bolivia, 1968-1971 U.S. leaders have always regarded Bolivia as a test case for U.S. economic foreign policy. 
Following World War II, Washington officials hoped to demonstrate that a relatively free economy could provide enormous financial wealth for Bolivia's working and middle classes. As such, U.S. officials provided significant economic support to the country in the 1950s. Despite the fact that U.S. officials were successful in constructing a reasonably stable, non-communist Bolivia, the increased U.S. military assistance empowered Bolivia's military, resulting in a coup in 1964, in the process ending democracy for nearly two decades. In 1968, the CIA assisted in the capture and execution of Argentine-born commander Che Guevara. Three years later, in 1971, a CIA-backed military coup deposed Bolivia's socialist president Juan Torres, and the new U.S.-approved dictator, Hugo Benzer, tortured and killed almost 2,000 political opponents without trial. 12. Dominican Republic, 1961-1965 from 1930 to 1960, the U.S. was a firm supporter of the deadly dictator Rafael Trujillo. However, his financial interests grew powerful enough to undermine U.S. influence in the region over time, and he was assassinated by the CIA in 1961. The country had a brief moment to take a collective breath, before the CIA intervened again in 1963, just as the nation achieved democracy for the first time. They deposed the newly elected Juan Bosch in a military coup and installed a fascist government. Within two years, a mass uprising tried to reinstate Juan Bosch, but U.S. Marines arrived to reinforce the fascists and suppress the rebellion, effectively ending the insurrection. 11. Iran, 1953-1988 The United States' relations with Iran have always been tense, to say the least. In 1953, a CIA coup deposed Iran's democratically elected leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, when he announced that he would nationalize the oil industry. The United States installed Shah Pahlavi in his place, a man whose regime was so repressive and cruel that the Iranian Revolution deposed him in 1979. The following year, on April 7, 1980, President Jimmy Carter severed diplomatic relations between Iran and the United States. Saddam Hussein attacked Iran in 1980. Iraq was supported by the United States with economic aid, training, and dual-use technology until 1988, even after the CIA found evidence that Iraqi forces used chemical weapons against Iranians. An estimated 1 million Iranians and 250 to 500,000 Iraqis died in the conflict. 10. Iraq, 1980-2003 during the Iraq-Iran War, the CIA supplied Saddam Hussein's forces with weapons, enabling him to suppress domestic dissent in his own nation with ruthless abandon. Eventually, Saddam rebelled against his rulers and invaded Kuwait in 1991 with the help of a highly developed and sophisticated military. The United States ultimately invaded Iraq in 2003 to remove weapons of mass destruction. It is terrible to think that only 15 years earlier, the U.S. encouraged Saddam to deploy chemical weapons against the Iranians and repeatedly obstructed U.N. resolutions that sought to denounce its use. 9. Panama, 1966-1989 The United States invaded Panama in 1989 to get rid of a dictator they previously supported. In fact, General Noriega had been on the CIA's contractual payroll since 1967 and had been trafficking cocaine with the CIA's knowledge since 1972. However, Washington was slowly losing patience with Noriega's growing independence. Over 20,000 U.S. troops invaded the country and took control of critical military installations as part of Operation Just Cause. Noriega received indictments by two U.S. federal grand juries in Florida on allegations of cocaine trafficking and racketeering, and the CIA removed him from their payroll. 8. Australia, 1975 In 1975, the CIA collaborated with Britain's MI6 to oust Edward Whitlam, Australia's democratically elected prime minister. Whitlam was a left-wing politician who threatened to close U.S. military bases in Australia. In a move that stunned the Australian public, old legislation that granted Governor General John Kerr vice-regal reserve powers was enacted, enabling Kerr to dissolve the government. Today, we know that Kerr was a member of the Association for Cultural Freedom, which the CIA supported. In a later conversation with Edward Whitlam in 1977, U.S. Senator Warren Christopher stated that the U.S. would never again interfere with Australia's electoral process. 7. Honduras, 1983 In 1983, the CIA supplied Honduran military officials with the Human Resource Exploitation Training Manual, 
a book describing torture tactics, and supervised an assassination campaign against leftist groups in the region. The operation was part of the Reagan administration's increased global anti-terrorism initiative. The result was a Honduran army unit called Intelligence Battalion 316, or Batallón 316. Members of the army unit carried out political assassinations and torture of alleged political opponents of the government. They received training and assistance from the CIA in Honduras and at U.S. military facilities. The resultant CIA-backed administration tortured and murdered hundreds of people. 6. Italy, 1948 The CIA admitted to interfering in Italian elections in 1948, threatening and beating communist leaders. They bought votes and disseminated propaganda in order to win the election for right-wing factions. The CIA was also accused of distributing falsified letters to damage Italian Communist Party PCI, officials. The National Security Act of 1947, which authorized international covert activities, was signed into law by American President Harry S. Truman a mere six months earlier. Previously undisclosed Defense Department documents revealed in 2017 that the CIA's covert aid to Italy continued into the early 1960s, averaging $5 million annually, around $60 million today. 5. Guatemala, 1954 The Guatemalan coup d'etat of 1954, a golpe de estado en Guatemala de 1954, was the product of a secret CIA operation codenamed PB Success. It toppled democratically elected Guatemalan President Jacobo Arbenz and ended the 1944-54 Guatemalan Revolution. It also established the military dictatorship of Carlos Castillo Armas, the first of a series of authoritarian rulers supported by the U.S. in Guatemala. Despite American allegations, no evidence of Soviet involvement in the Arbenz government was ever discovered. In turn, the CIA's chosen right-wing military dictators would go on to massacre over 100,000 Guatemalans. 4. Uruguay, 1969 In 1969, Dan Mitrioni arrived in Uruguay to teach the local death squads how to torture their communist opponents. His successes with his death squads led him to eventually becoming so despised by the revolutionaries that he ended up murdered a year later. His operating philosophy was best described by one CIA officer who said that he applied the exact amount of pain in the right place and with the perfect amount to obtain the desired effect. Dan Mitrioni not only focused on training the death squads, he was also reported to have practiced his torture methods on homeless Uruguayan people who would then be executed. 3. Laos, 1957 The CIA launched numerous attempts to dispose of Laos' socialist leader, Patet Lao. When their efforts failed, the U.S. turned to bombing the country for the next 16 years, from 1957 to 1973. The sheer volume of explosives deployed on Laos, 2 million tons of cluster bombs, has made it the most bombed country in the world. At least one quarter of the Laotian population became refugees. The United States' secret war in Laos had a long-lasting impact on Laotian history, hampering Laotians' health, education, and migration choices to this day. 2. Indonesia, 1965 as a result of the CIA's disposal of Indonesia's President Sukarno in a 1965 military takeover, his successor, General Suharto, systematically executed as many as one million of his country's citizens, who were considered communists. When declassified papers became public in 2017, the extent of America's involvement in the ruthless anti-communist purge was revealed to have been far more significant than previously thought. The U.S. Embassy got regular information on assassinations and was aware that the majority of Suharto's victims were innocent. In fact, the CIA offered to assist in suppressing media coverage related to the crimes. 1. Congo, 1961-1965 In a speech on Congo's Independence Day in 1960, Patrice Lumumba, the first democratically elected president, promised to demonstrate to the world what the Congolese people are capable of when they are allowed to work in freedom. Within six months of his speech, the CIA had moved to fund his political opponents. Lumumba was imprisoned and finally executed on Dwight D. Eisenhower's orders. However, the CIA could not place Lumumba's opponents into power as the public loved him, and a civil war resulted. Mobuto Seko was put in power in 1965 as a U.S.-friendly dictator following the CIA's second military coup. In 1997, after decades of human rights abuses, he was finally overthrown. The humanitarian situation in the Congo continues to deteriorate to this very day, with ongoing violent conflicts preventing people from returning home. 
More than 5 million people have been displaced within the nation, and more than 1 million Congolese have applied for asylum, primarily in Africa. So, what other examples of CIA interference that changed history can you think of? Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Follow all my social medias, links in the description below. Thank you guys so much. I love you all. And as always, I'll see you next time.